Stephen Coreno, KOR, Art of Sports, are here with the one and only Michaela Mayer. Good to see you. Man, You since you've put on, like, since you've left 130, you see, like, the muscle. You see, like, you just, even the smile, I feel like you're yeah. like, yes, like, I could eat stuff. <laughs> just, you look great. Just how, how does it feel being kind of maybe more natural weight now? Definitely a lot more natural weight. The second I moved up to 35 um, for the fight after last September, Mayer versus Baumgartner, I, my body... The, I let it fill out the tiniest bit and it just like screamed at me to keep going because even 135 was a cut and then my last fight um, against Porto was at 142 still a cut so um, it's time to let my body fill out probably a little bit past due but I still feel great so I feel like I'm in my prime so I'm not worried about it and I just expect this year to be even better because yeah I feel really comfortable. Man, it's starting off uh, with a bang with Natasha Jonas. Congratulations! Thank you. you know, uh, going out there in in January. Just, I feel like you've you've made yourself a you're kind of an honorary UK member a little bit. Maybe if you're not fighting a UK person, maybe. But yeah. but I feel like you're, you've gotten kind of comfortable being out there. Yeah, you know, that is where Top Rank has had me fighting the last three fights, and I think a lot of people have been wondering maybe why. They've been sending me out there. You know, what's going on? But this has all been brewing. This has all been part of the plan. Um, you know, I know that I knew I was going to end up at 147, and especially after I saw my body filling out so fast. And this is where all the women are moving to. They're all moving to 147. Like these next big fights for me are all against girls like you know Sandy Ryan, Chantel Cameron's moving there, Tasha Jonas, and so there's a lot of big fights for me at 147. It makes sense business-wise and just physically. So um, it was the best move, and it's been brewing. And this is the exact fight we wanted to sort of kick it off, and we got it. It's a great fight. I, I stylistically, how how do you approach a, a a Jonas yourself with your style, especially with the kind of the new weight behind your mm. behind you? Um, I'm not worried about the new weight. I've taken this last year to really fill out, and I, I don't want to just be 147. Right? I don't want to just be heavy. I want right. to be a competitive, strong 147 pounder. So I've been working on that. Um, but going against someone like Jonas, the one thing that is going to be different in this training camp is that she's the first southpaw I've gone up against as a pro. All right, coming up in the amateurs, like you face southpaws all the time. You never know who you're going to face, right? But um, 20 pro fights and I haven't faced a southpaw. So uh, that's one thing that's sort of changing in our camp. And we're mixing things up that way. There's a different strategy, obviously. But um, other than that, I'm just going to treat her like any other opponent and go in there and not let anyone take any round from me because can't let any fights get close. Right. Yeah, can't, especially <laughs> not over there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, Let's talk about uh, this fight this weekend, Shakur Stevenson. He's, uh, I feel like, one of the harder people to find opponents for, uh, you know, for top rank. You know, people keep saying no. Um, how does uh, Dos Santos do, you know, knockout artist, you know, knocked out Ryo. You know, you, we, we see the power. But I feel like Shakur has kind of, you know, been in with kind of all, all the styles that you could be, right, going through the amateurs, kind of being in the ring with Terrence and them. Yeah. Just uh, how does Shakur get it done? Or how does what happens actually on Saturday? Okay, so I think I've heard a lot of people say that this is going to be the toughest fight for him, you know, and um, that he, he could get he could lose his time or get stopped or whatever and so, you know, so on and so forth. And, you know, I don't put anything back past Dos Santos, but... I know Shakur, like I know him as a fighter, I come up with him and you know he's one of my favorites to this day for a reason. He just is so smart in the ring and he has such a good spacing. So like even though Dos Santos has a, you know this knockout ratio and everyone's looking for him to hit Shakur, Shakur is extremely hard to hit. He just is and the best fighters to me don't look like they're doing anything special. Same with like someone like Andre Ward, he doesn't look like he's doing anything magnific magnificent but they're so technically sound and their, their high Q is so high and their spacing is, they're so smart in there that it, they make it look easy and that's what I think Shakur has done. Um, maybe just to viewers, obviously to their opponents they've they can see what he's doing because they're not taking any fights with him. But, um, you know, I hope it's a competitive fight because we all want to see that. But I, I just can't go, go pa looking past Shakur. I can't. <laughs> Have you been in the ring with Shakur? Have you done sparring with, with him? Yeah, I've done a couple rounds of sparring over the last, what, 10 years. We've been on the team together, and it's horrible. Every time I go to spar Shakur, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> fucking sucks. Chris, I'm not it sparring. fucking sucks. <laughs> Yeah. Good. So what's like the most difficult thing to like get accustomed to with Shakur? His space. It's just that's what I'm saying. It's his spacing. He's just so hard to hit. You think he's right there and just one step back. Um, you don't think he's in range to hit you with the jab and boom, it just, it's so quick and right down the pipe. So um, obviously he's not letting. Well, actually he let loose on me one more time. One time. I'm not gonna lie. 
did? He did let loose on me one time, and I was looking at the coach, at the coach I'm like, really? <laughs> what you got me into? <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, he fought me like a Mexican, and I was like, this is not even your style, okay? <laughs> You're trying to hurt me. You're me now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it's all in good game. I, I mean, me and Shakur have been tight for a long time, so yeah, I'm rooting for him, but also rooting for a competitive fight. Right, right. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be a good fight. It's a good story. I, I feel like you have a lot of those, like, Colorado Olympic training yeah. stories, like with Terrence, and, and have you ever been in the ring with Terrence? Have no, you ever done any work? No, 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 never been in the ring with Terrence. Um, nope. <laughs> you seen, what's kind of the most spectacular thing you've seen of Terrence, like, in the gym like that? Like, maybe sparring, or, or I don't know, what what would you say is like, wow, like, look at what he just did. I think it's, and same when I watched the core, it's just, they're so relaxed in there. You can see that they're just looking and seeing, and um, you look at their opponent that they're sparring, and they're, like, going as hard as they possibly can, right? They're everything, they're putting everything into it. And you look at someone like Shakur or Crawford, and they're just so relaxed, just picking and blocking and mixing up their punch selection. Their punch, you think they're about to throw a hook, and they just dip and throw. It's like the punch selection is, it does not, they don't throw what you would expect them to throw. Um, so that's something I've always picked up from them. I try and watch them and say, okay, I'm going to try and guess what they're throwing, but they never throw what I guess them to throw. True masters, huh? Just yeah. both, both of those yeah. guys. I uh, just want to switch gears a little bit. Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou. I, I feel like what, what was kind of your reaction when when Tyson hit the deck? What, were you kind of like, oh shit? Okay, I actually didn't see the fight. Oh, you did. I was okay. somewhere doing. I can't remember where I've been. I've missed the last handful of fights. One because my DAZN app won't work, but two because I was doing something. I missed that fight. Um, haven't gotten to watch it yet. I hear a lot of people saying that it might have been a bad decision, but. You know, I'd like to go watch it back myself and really pick it apart and see. So I know I'm late, but I'll get on. What are you gonna do? <laughs> All right, last couple for me. Um, you know, we talked about it. You know, off camera a little bit. I haven't heard you mention you've been very classy about, you know, Alicia Bumgarner's kind of positive drug test and, and all that, what happened with that. Just what, I know you guys were kind of been going back and forth, though, prior to that, you know, maybe after, not so much. I don't know. What's your kind of reaction to, to hearing about Listen, that? obviously it's shocking, and we don't, it's puts a lot of things into question, right? Um, but it's a big deal, and I waited till my fight week to confront it in a professional way with the media. Um, I haven't gotten on Twitter, Twitter and bashed her, and I haven't, you know, I've sort of spared her in the, probably the worst time. Like I like, definitely oh, spared her. <laughs> and, you know, there's things I've wanted to say. Um, you know, my team maybe bite my tongue a little bit, but for the most part, uh, I see why now. It's like she's irrelevant to me. Um, she has things that she needs to focus on. I've moved up, I've moved on. And when, when I was attacking her on <laughs> Twitter and we were going at each other's throats, there was a reason for that. It was to build a fight. And, um, you know, I've lost a lot of respect for her in a lot of ways. So to me, like, she's not worth my energy anymore. No, I, I completely understand that. Last one, uh, Michaela. I actually have something for you here. Okay. Yeah, I want you to, uh, let's see. Well, let me get it. I should have, should have been a cleaner, uh, a cleaner entrance here. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. So just if you could open that, just. <laughs> God damn it! God. <laughs> if you did it to me, you scared me. <laughs> I'm worse. You guys saw the video of Tyrone posted. That's why he did that to me. I did it. I, did I am it. just a chicken like that. Oh, no. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I've done this. You did it to me. You scared me. I thought it was gonna be a ring. <laughs> <laughs> next time, next time. <laughs> Michaela, thank you like, so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for being a good sport. That was so great. No Tell the fans where they could uh, follow you. Um, follow me on Instagram at Michaela Mayer. Uh, January 20th, Tasha versus Mayer. It'll be in Liverpool. Um, Going to be a big fight, so make sure you either get out there or tune in on Sky Sports or ESPN+. Plus. There it is. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Damn Appreciate it. it. It's past Halloween, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I already knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she ran over.